Good morning, here is the Sanibel Island and Southwest Florida update as of March 24th, 2023. Crow, the Clinic for Rehabilitation of Wildlife, has reopened on Sanibel Island. They could still use some help cleaning outdoor enclosures, so they are having a volunteer day this Saturday the 25th or Tuesday the 28th. Sign up information can be found on their Facebook page. Scott Crater, one of Sanibel's city councilmen, was instrumental in helping place Sanibel residents in temporary housing since FEMA has been such a failure. Reading from Scott Crater's social media post, five travel trailers were placed at Periwinkle Park yesterday to house folks who were displaced from Sanibel's affordable community housing due to storm damage. They now have comfortable temporary homes of their own for the next six months until their apartments are fixed. Gratitude to Maria E. F. Fish, David Munch, Uncle Jerry Munch, and I might be saying that last name wrong, I apologize, and Nikki at Periwinkle Park. City Manager Dana Souza and the Florida Department of, Mer of Emergency Management for making this happen. Thank these folks the next time you see them, end quote. These are not FEMA trailer trailers. These are state provided travel trailers that I believe Florida's Hurricane Ian Fund will be covering the expenses of. FEMA is still in the process of analyzing two sites on Sanibel for potential FEMA trailer parks. FEMA has been working on this since November and they are still in the planning stages. By the time they actually get around to bringing trailers to Sanibel, the hurricane season will be upon us again. I try not to hate on FEMA too much because they do help some people, but with how many negative stories I have been reading, I believe FEMA has disappointed way more people than they have actually helped. Red Tide Update the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation reported that Southwest Florida residents and spring breakers can literally breathe a sigh of relief. Over the past two weeks, red tide has subsided in the region. As of March 17th, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission reported 18 out of 79 samples along the Gulf Coast taken the week prior contained bloom levels of the red tide causing organisms, Carina Berevis, primarily in Pinellas County to the north. In Lee County, samples had background to low concentrations. On some beaches, dead fish have been manually removed, and in other areas, many fish were naturally washed away by the tide. That is good news, but uh, keep in mind, red tide is a thing in Florida. Um, it happens every year. I think a lot of people who don't really know the history of red tide assumed that this was because of Hurricane Ian. It's not. Absolutely, Hurricane Ian made it worse this year, but red tide happens every year. And it's not to diminish red tide. I'm just surprised by how many people comment acting like red tide is because of Hurricane Ian, and that's not true. There's a bigger issue on what causes red tide. So many factors, with pollution being one of those main factors, and it's definitely something that needs to be looked at. If you're curious, uh, definitely do some research. Just don't assume red tide's going to be over with once we recover from Hurricane Ian because that is quite opposite. It's something we're going to deal with every year until the world can get a hold of their pollution issues. Thanks for listening.